Hey there, this is Lee Whittier, the Dog Show Mentor, and I'm here today with Richard Paquette as my guest. Welcome, Richard. Hello, Lee. I know, you look like summer in it Canada. It is summer up here in Northern Ontario. We're having great weather and sunshine. Life is good. That's wonderful, yep. Um, so uh, tell us uh, who you are, what your breed is where you're from and we look forward to having conversation with you a two-way conversation and today we're going to talk about integrity and what it is and what you think it is and particularly as it relates to the AKC code of sportsmanship so who is here today I know a bunch of you said you were coming hey April nice to see you Shih Tzu Minneapolis that must be a friend of yours Richard she is nice thank you for coming she's april one of our uh, proponents of performance events and competes amazingly at that oh that is exciting it you know it's so much fun for the dogs to have that different stimulation performance confirmation it goes hand in hand and it's it is no longer separate cat from the uk with laskin malamutes and leisha shih tzu also <clears throat> a newbie at confirmation. Alicia's Ooh. from your neck of the woods in uh, out in on the west coast. Yeah, Alicia, where are you in Washington? I'm sure we've met or seen each other at shows. Nora, hi, Nora from Houston, Labs and Welsh Springer Spaniels, and Cindy, Spanish Water Dogs from Pennsylvania, heading to specialty in Michigan tomorrow. Excellent do well present well i think we might have met at one time and salcombe lewis county okay so you're a little bit farther east i think and sandy from maryland toy manchester's hi sandy welcome nancy also from washington we have a washington contingent with and and a preponderance of shih tzu Oh, Francis. we also have a Lake Land Terrier person, Crystal Davies from Alberta. Oh, oh, I missed that. Hey, Crystal. Nice to see you. Another friend of Richard's, Angie, Border Collies, Michigan. Matt, also different kind of collie, rough collies from Wisconsin. So, you know, Lee, I have a pose a question. We're, we're going to talk about sportsmanship and integrity today. Sure. And um, I, I've always been a big proponent of sportsmanship and uh, have sponsored many national awards in Canada for junior handling, uh, in, uh, in the Top Dog Race in Canada. We have our annual banquet and I have a sportsmanship award there. But I want to ask our, our viewers today, would you win this award? Would you be the person who would exemplify conduct most becoming and illustrate the ideals of sportsmanship, including Fairness, civility, honesty, unselfishness, responsibility, respect for dogs, show officials, and your fellow exhibitors. So are you a good sportsman? Do you follow some of those guidelines? That's right. Uh, ex excellent question. Do sportsmen should respect the history, traditions, and integrity of the sport of dogs? And hey, Jennifer, nice to see you. And Julie, welcome back. So uh, Richard's question was uh, well well stated. Um, are you committed to values of fair play, honesty, courtesy, vigorous competition, as well as winning and losing with grace? And, and at Talk Show Mentor, we talked about that last night, winning and losing with grace, by the way, and how to do that with integrity. Um, so the winning part is the part that you go into competition with that mindset of winning and doing so at all costs, except your integrity, because without integrity, you have nothing. So Kat says, be as graceful in defeat as well as when winning totally. Absolutely. Bettina from Denmark. Hello, Bettina. Chris, Tennessee at Beathens. Excellent. 
So let's talk about this. Um, integrity, what, what does that mean to you? It a, a, actually happens to be a core value of Dog Show Mentor. Dog Show Mentor has an entire set of core values that we work, compete, and live by. And we feel happy and comfortable with each other, expressing our gritty selves of competition and at the same time, honoring this code of sportsmanship. Angie says, I always make sure to say congrats to every level, but I do notice when the silence is deafening when I do the winning. Well, you know, for people like Angie in the world, oftentimes we have our integrity questioned. Uh, we feel very upset when it happens, but I have a motto that I have lived by my entire life. And this is the motto so that you can still hold your head proud, even when that silence is deafening when you do the winning. So the motto I follow is people of integrity expect to be believed. And when they are not, they let time prove them right. So you may not get instant rewards with being a person of integrity, but in the long run, you will, because once, you know, time passes and people evaluate you in, in a lot of different lights, you will be proud to be saying you are a person of integrity. Thank you. Well said, Richard. It is, it is true that without integrity, you have nothing. And it is why it is a core value of Dog Show Mentor because it helps you win more. Because as you stand up more and as people recognize you as a person of integrity, they begin to respect you more. And with that respect comes adoration at times. And so I was speaking with a woman this morning and she is going head to head with um, a documentary member and she was very excited about this, but also very determined that she would have the key on how to do that. And it's all in it's all in the moment, isn't it, Richard? When you're in the heat of that competition in the ring, right? Isn't that that moment in time where you are your gritty, competitive self and, and then the chips fall where the judge puts them? You know, I, I totally agree. And I, I think I may have even stated this on one of your other programs, uh, this whole aspect of competition. You need to compete with creativity, not negativity. Now, what that meant for me in my career as a dog handler and a breeder and an exhibitor was oftentimes I went to dog shows and, and I, I was beaten by my competition, just like your two dog show mentor people are competing against each other each weekend. But I do encourage them to compete with creativity. So... When your competition is beating you, you go out and you either breed better dogs, groom the dogs better, train better, work harder, as opposed to the negative aspect of it where you blame everyone else except your poor efforts for your results. So if you put in the work, you will get the results. And, uh, you know, don't blame it on the that crooked judge or that judge that's blind or, you know, the judge that doesn't know your breed. Well, just go out, work harder, compete with creativity. At the end of the day, the rewards will come your way. That is so true, Richard, is that um, compete with creativity. I love that. It's, um, it's what, it's, it's what we do with Dog Show Mentor. And we, when we compete, we figure out where our dog is the strongest and what their virtues are and where the other dog's virtues and, and their, uh, their faults lie so that we can compete effectively by no having the knowledge, right? And when you have knowledge, 
when you have integrity, you develop that knowledge about the dogs. And we have Marie here, one of my new mantras. I don't get it right every time, but I'm trying. You don't have to attend every argument you're invited to. Well said, Marie. And Nikki from Fort Lauderdale with Cairns and Michael, figure out how to make a statement with your dog. That's right. That's part of creativity, isn't it, Richard? It is. And, you know, it's so frustrating that there is an element of people, exhibitors at dog shows that want to steal your success. They want to steal, the, they want to steal your lunch. You know, you know even though you, you may have had a modest win, they look down on it. And, and it, it's so frustrating. And it, it, I really love promoting sportsmanship because, you know, and it should be true. It shouldn't be phony. You know, you should actually feel happy when your competition wins. And for those of you who win more often than you should, I'm teasing when I say that. Um, there are a few of those here. <laughs> well, you know, I've always said I had a very high winning percentage, but when my competition did beat me, I was quite happy for them because if they never win, they're not gonna come back and uh, you need healthy competition to enjoy our sport. Well, I have always said as an owner handler, it's all about preparation. You have to have a better dog. It has to be better trained, in better condition, in better coat than your competition and better presented. And that's and that's pre that is preparation and it's part of integrity. And uh <laughs> Michael says to uh, Becky that he loves Border Terriers. 20 years, how nice. And Matt, integrity and sportsmanship present the greatest opportunity for the purebred conservationist dog community to differentiate themselves from the backyard for profit and designer breed fanciers. Thank you for bringing that up, Matt. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I can't agree more. It does, it does present that opportunity for us as purebred conservationists when we're at shows, when we're in the ring. But integrity extends farther than that. It extends to our home, to our breeding practices, to how we sell our puppies. And integrity is different for everybody, though, isn't it? It's uh, for some. I find some breeds and breeders, they're, they do things differently. They sell their puppies under a different type of contract. They Maybe they have a different arrangement about stud services. So when, when we go to a different breed, sometimes we find that things look a little bit different than they did and they're still integrous, but it's a different style, that the approach is different. So if anybody has had that experience, I would love to hear um, if you've changed breeds um, or if you have two breeds, how the breeding practices uh, are different and still uh, lie within integrity within your breed. I've had uh, opportunity in my 50 years in dogs to dabble in several breeds. Uh, obviously, the Shih Tzu have always been our main breed, but we've had some very successful opportunities in Sammies and Afghans and Salukis and many other breeds. And um, for the most part, you know, I find the dog fancy is fairly consistent, you know, among breeders. One consistent thing is, is that there is politics and bad apples in every breed. So you do need to just rise above it and be more creative and get prepared because prepared will make you more confident, which will definitely increase your winning percentage. Yeah, knowledge and preparation. That's education and preparation. And that's, again, what we do at Dog Show Mentor. And, and I do want to take a minute to talk about Jumpstart, which Jumpstart 90 Days uh, Dreams to Reality is starting July 15th. If you have an interest in going from dreams to reality, uh, get in touch with me. I think the link will be uh, in the chat shortly. 
and we are rolling for 90 days and see what you can accomplish in that time with me. You'll have direct access to me uh, where you can ask me any question. Uh, we have private sessions and group sessions together. So um, jump start, get in touch with me. All right. So let's see what else uh, is in, in this chat. For me, it's sportsmanship and it comes from me having a lack of self-confidence. My dog has been successful with handlers and when I get out of my head, we do beautifully. Isn't that the truth? But when I get super critical of myself, my dog picks up on it and it holds us back and makes us a sour loser. Oh, Sarah, Elizabeth, I don't believe you could be a sour loser. Because what we do is we pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and get gritty and figure out what we need to do to beat the competition. All right. And cat. And it takes a big person to admit that. I just want to acknowledge that, Sarah Elizabeth. It takes a big person to acknowledge that sometimes you get grumpy about, about losing. Um, and I think that anyone who says that they've never experienced those feelings needs to get more in touch with their feelings. Um, so Kat says, be that the person that people aspire to be in all specs, aspects of preservation, breeding, and showing, going that extra mile. Right. Integrity is also helping your competition, helping other people in your breed, and helping other people in the sport. Oh, so here's one for you, Richard. I've always told the juniors I mentor, always look at a loss as boost to see how you can do better. That is so true. Um, I can remember back in the day when when my little toddler Jody came back from junior handling in tears <laughs> and said, Dad, I should have won. I don't understand it. That other kid wasn't even half as good as I was. And I told her right away, if I said, if you come back with that attitude one more time, you will be not competing in juniors anymore because I want you to put yourself in the shoes of that child that beat you. They were ecstatic, you know, and you should have been happy for them because you, because being the daughter of a professional handler, you do have some advantages with, you know, one-on-one -on -one training tips galore oh, and i said you have so many advantages never begrudge someone else beating you and uh you know you should have shared in her success and her happiness you know and, and it is very frustrating when uh, you know juniors aren't sportsmanlike you know it drives me totally insane and when i do do my mentoring of them i always teach them first of all if you're not going into junior handling strictly to have fun, you need to reassess what you're doing here because you want to have some fun. Although it is a great learning experience to learn all about showing of dogs, animal husbandry, care of animals, you name it, you need to be having fun and you'll have a lot more fun when you share your success with other people. That uh, Jody was so fortunate to have a father like you, not only were you successful, but you taught her how to be successful. And in, uh, in, in a very tough sport, this is uh, not for, as they say, not for sissies. Mm -hmm. And holding, holding one's integrity is, a, is, of course, I think, uh, something that a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. um, because they're so invested in their dog and invested in, in winning. Um, I love uh, Christine's uh, post here, preparation, not just your dog, but your travel setup, double of everything. She says, I have grooming stuff at home and a show grooming bag and ringside bag. So maybe even triple items. I no longer panic if I've forgotten something because I always have it. So you don't have to fall outside of your integrity because you forgot something and it makes you mad, right? Doesn't it make you mad when you, oh my God, I forgot my comb or I forgot this or that, right? You never forget it. And so you can stay within your integrity with what you're doing by the ring. That's, that's lovely. Um, 
Christine, well, that, thank you. That's why you have friends. You can go borrow stuff. You know? <laughs> one, one comment I do have to make, though, is Wendy's mother had a little bit to do with raising her also. Oh. But, uh, and, and one thing I do want to really try to reinforce with everyone on this call today, lead by example. You do not appreciate how many people are watching you in the ring, outside of the ring, your reactions to winning and losing. And I want you to be that person that leads by their example. And, and that's a very important thing to learn because oftentimes it's even unknowingly. Someone will see you do something and you will give them improper guidance as to how to conduct themselves. So when I'm in the ring, when I'm at a dog show, I always try to lead my example and, you know, avoid all those situations where someone looking at my actions or my body language or whatever would have a perception that I'm not totally into it, totally sportsman, totally having fun, totally all of those things. So lead by example. I, I always say a winner is a leader and a leader is a winner. There's all kinds of people watching you. You don't understand. I mean, from I'll, I'll stick it at, stick it to a lot of you exhibitors as a judge from an all breed judge's point of view. We observe people. We see some of the bad losers. We, we see the unsportsmanlike people in the ring, either crowding other dogs or squeaking their squeaky right. such that it interferes with some other dog or all the nasty things that some people do in the ring. You don't think judges notice that? You don't think subliminally we will hold it against them when it comes time to point? May move that person from first down to second, third, or even completely out of the ribbons because good judges don't appreciate unsportsmanlike conduct and people trying to hurt other people's chances. So, you know, you're being watched all the time. So conduct yourself in a great way. I mean, I can remember one time uh, watching Jody in the ring and she reached out in front of her and stacked the rear legs of a novice person's dogs in the ring. Aww. And that person beat her that day. Aww. And I'll bet you to this day, Jody is still happy. She helped yeah. that person. And uh, that's the kind of person you need to be. And if you don't think judges observe these kind of things that happen in the ring, you need to reassess what you're doing. I, 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 can't, I can't agree more. And uh, that was a great sportsman-like uh, move that uh, Jody made that day. And I'm, I'm delighted um, with Christine's post. She says, um, it's amazing how many people are watching you. And then she goes down and says, um, she's had so many comments in the last year about the presentation of her dogs uh, from when she started to now. So, you know, if you, if you want that kind of, um, that kind of boost, then, uh, dog show mentor is the place for you. It's so frustrating when the person behind is throwing bait right in front of your dog. Yeah, that, that, uh, really does, uh, put the toes right up against the line, Allison, when people do that. And I think sometimes people do it thoughtlessly not on purpose, but in the Rottweiler ring back in the, in the uh, 80s and 90s, there were people who would purposely throw bait right at your dog's feet and try to get them to move. And that's why having a better trained dog gives you more integrity, helps you win more, right? Because your dog's not going to move. And therefore, you don't have to worry about what somebody else is doing you just worry about what you're doing. You worry about presenting your dog. Kelly says, I've been working on controlling my emotions when things don't go my way. I've learned to say it wasn't our day today. So Kelly, that's, um, as I said to the other person, you know, it's um, takes a big person to admit that. And I congratulate you. Um, and then after you say, it wasn't our day today, then you can go back to saying, what can I do tomorrow 
one thing that I can do tomorrow to get that win. Um, and I hope it's something creative and not something negative, like ruining your other competition's chances. Go in the ooh, ring. You know, ooh, Richard. You, well, that's what I'm saying. It's, you're talking about those people that throw bait at, you know, at your dog's feet to yeah. see if they'll move. Yeah. I hope that when you go in the next day, you compete creatively such that um, you will increase that winning percentage. Well, Kat says that she gets annoyed when people try to box you in. And I've experienced that. And, um, you know, I, I think that there are times where you can be in your integrity and still um, maintain, maintain your poise and ask people very nicely, please move your dog back. And it's usually very effective. So another um, mechanism you can use is if they're going to crowd you, move a little off the mats, move towards that judge. It looks like grandstanding, but if you're deflecting someone's bad manners, it's better for you to move off that mat and let them crowd you all they want because they're, you know, they're going to look really silly if they do the same thing you've done, take a step off the mat and just free bait your dog and they try to crowd you again. It's, it's almost laughable when it does happen. And uh, I like to play those games where I just try to outsmart my competition. Who's not behaving in a good manner. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes that can, that can work for sure. As a judge, I usually um, control my ring so that that doesn't happen. So that if I see people crowding, I walk over, I stop what I'm doing. I walk over and I say, would you please, move here, move here. Would you please move back on the mat? I want to see everybody in a line together. And that's my integrity as a judge to have control of my ring and not have people crowding, boxing, moving out. It's just like, nope, we're all going to, you're all going to be where I, where I put you. And uh, Michael says, Nikki, ring awareness is important for novices. I had to direct traffic at Bryn Mawr and group a few weeks ago. Absolutely, Michael. I would love to hear more about that. Thank you, Megan. All right. And we are just about out of time. Another um, quick handling tip, uh, Lee, if you'll per permit me, is when you're going around the ring, anticipate where the line's going to stop and stop quickly. And if indeed you have a bad actor behind you, you're, you should just turn around and face your dog towards you and start slowly backing up towards them and they can't crowd you then. I'm talking about a last resort for a real bad actor. So don't let them interfere with your dog. Don't let them crowd you. All right. Well, with that tip, thank you so much, Richard Paquette. Um, as usual, you've given uh, a lot of wisdom here and I know that our, um, viewers uh, who are engaging um, are excited to see you again. And I was certainly happy to have you here. Um, Dog Show Mentor, don't forget, uh, we have three programs. One is surely right for you if you're an owner handler. Uh, everybody needs a coach and I'm that person. So this is Lee Whittier, your Dog Show Mentor, signing off. Bye for now.